fine, right? But there are a lot of us here today, and Siku here is the only bear doing the training, so we just want to make sure that he feels really safe, really comfortable having such a big group of us watching his session today. Wonderful. Now, training is kind of like a checkup for the polar bears. So if you've ever been to the doctor, you might know that they might ask you to move around in different ways, maybe bend down, touch your toes, or show off different parts of your body, like the inside of your mouth, just to make sure that you're healthy, right? It's the same thing here with our polar bears. So the zookeeper will be asking him to do a whole bunch of different behaviors. And all of these behaviors are things that help her to make sure that Siku, our polar bear, is really healthy. So for example, I just saw her ask him to open up that mouth, get a good look at those teeth, make sure they look good. She might ask him to show off his paws as well. She might also ask him to walk back and forth, stand up, sit down, just to make sure that he's moving okay and he's not showing any signs of discomfort when he moves around in those different ways. Now I will also tell you these sessions are voluntary for our polar bears. So it is always up to them if they decide to participate or not. I know Siku was having a really good time playing with that barrel. How many of you got to see that? Yeah, that was pretty neat, right? So I was not sure if he was gonna be interested in training today. So we got lucky, he decided to come over. He might decide to leave in the middle of the session as well. That's perfectly fine. We want him to have that choice to participate or not. Now I love these training sessions because they are a wonderful way to provide our animals with choices while also having them participate in their care. But it's also a really amazing opportunity for all of us here to get a really close look at a polar bear. Can you raise your hand if this is the closest you've ever been to a polar bear? Yes, it definitely is for me too. I don't know if we'd want to get much closer than this, but that means that you'll hopefully be able to see some of those extremes of the Arctic by watching Siku up close during his training session today. Now in their native habitat, polar bears do live in the Arctic. And when you think of the Arctic, I want you all to think of a word that comes to mind when you think of the Arctic. All right, does everyone have one? All right, shout it out for me. Ooh, cold penguins. Interesting answers today. Yeah. Well, I know that cold and ice are ones that people think of a lot. Those come to my mind as well. The Arctic does have seasons, a lot like Chicago. So in the spring and summer, it's going to warm up, sometimes 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But in the winter, it's gonna get cold, just like you all said, sometimes down to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Much more extreme than the winters we have here in Chicago. Now that means that polar bears need some adaptations to really thrive in that cold and harsh winter environment. And one adaptation that they have to help them out with that, you can see all over their body. What do they have all over their body that would help a polar bear stay warm? Fur. Fur, yeah, you got it. Polar bears have really thick, really dense fur, which is great for staying warm. You can really see it pushing through the mesh there. That fur is also great for staying dry. That long hair on top is called guard hair because it really guards their skin. It protects it from the rain, the water, the snow, keeps all of that from getting too close to their skin underneath. Now underneath all of that fur, polar bears in the Arctic have another adaptation to stay warm that is extremely important but it is a little bit harder to see, and that is a four and a half inch thick layer of blubber. Can you guys say blubber? blubber. It's kind of a fun word, right? Blubber is a really thick layer of fat that acts like a wetsuit for polar bears. So it's gonna keep them super insulated when they're out in the Arctic, and especially when they're out looking for their food. They actually get their blubber from their food as well. Does anybody know what a polar bear might eat in the Arctic? You can shout it out if you know. Okay, I'm hearing some different answers here. Yeah, I heard fish and I heard seals. So they might eat some fish sometimes. I know Siku is eating some fish today, but eating seals is really important for polar bears. Seal is the only food that has all the calories and all of the fat that polar bears need to build up their thick layer of blubber. Now that blubber is especially important because food can sometimes be hard to find in the Arctic. In fact, a polar bear might go days or weeks, maybe even months without eating. Can you imagine that? So that means that if that's the case, they are really gonna rely on that blubber to get them through that time. Now friends, do you think that life here for Siku is a little bit different than those polar bears in the Arctic? Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. First of all, he gets to eat every single day, multiple times a day. So he is never worried about when his next meal is going to be. It's also a little bit warmer here in Chicago than it is in the Arctic. Did you guys notice that today? Yes, I think usually we're pretty grateful for that. But that means that Suku and our other bear, Talini, <laughs> they don't need that thick layer of blubber that a polar bear in the Arctic would need. So, instead of eating seals here at the zoo, they're going to get some other items in their vet-approved diet. That includes things like fish, as you guys mentioned before, as well as some beef, some meat, and fruits and vegetables as well. I know Suku, Suku here really likes lettuce and watermelon, which might seem a little funny, right? Maybe not your first guess as to what our polar bears eat here at the zoo. But for their needs here in Chicago, as opposed to the Arctic, that is far more appropriate than eating seals. However, those Arctic polar bears have to eat seals, like you guys mentioned before, which means they have to be good hunters. Now their size is really going to help them to be those top predators that they are. Did you all notice how big Siku is? Especially when he stood up tall, right? He is massive. He is about nine feet tall when he stands up on those back legs, way bigger than any of us here. And does anybody want to guess how much he weighs in pounds? What do you think? <laughs> Around 9,200 pounds. Yeah, you're pretty close. He is about 1,000 pounds. So he is really, really big. That is typical for an adult male polar bear. So that size, of course, is going to make them good hunters. They also rely a lot on their paws as tools for hunting. Their paws are really big, and they have those giant claws that are great for grabbing and holding onto their food. Their paws are also specially adapted for walking across sea ice, which is frozen ocean water. And polar bears use that sea ice to walk out into the ocean and find the seals that they need to eat. Now, if you are a 1,000 pound polar bear, you wanna make sure you're not slipping around on the ice, right? So their paws have tiny little bumps on the bottom to give them a really good grip as they walk across that ice. It's kind of like the bottom of our sneakers or our snow, boot, snow boots when we wear those in the winter. <laughs> polar bears just have those built in. Ooh, very impressive. All right, now I have mentioned a couple times now how polar bears in the Arctic absolutely rely on seals in order to survive and they rely on sea ice or that frozen ocean water as the platform that they need to find those seals. Now when we burn fossil fuels like coal and oil for things such as energy and transportation, we release rampant amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And this carbon dioxide builds up and acts like a really thick blanket that traps heat around the world and disrupts the climate. Now, one of the ways it's disrupting the climate is by reducing the amount of sea ice in the Arctic. So there's less of that frozen ocean water, which means it's becoming a little bit more difficult for polar bears to find their food. Now the good news. Who's ready for good news? Yes, I know I am. The good news is that there are absolutely ways we can help out with that. It is not too late for polar bears, which I think is fantastic news. So we can help out by reducing our energy consumption and helping to fight climate change. Now, I would bet that many of you are helping out already. So let's see. Can you raise your hand for me if you used public transportation to come to the zoo today? A bus, a train, a bus? biking, walking. Yeah, wonderful. Look at all those hands up around us. If public transportation is an option for you to get somewhere, that is a really great way to reduce our energy consumption, help fight climate change, how about those polar bears? All right, how about this one? Raise your hand for me if you turned off all the lights in your house before you came to the zoo today. There we go, that's an easy one, right? All of us can do that. After you leave your bedroom, after you leave your house, just turn off those lights. That's gonna help save energy, help out the polar bears, and guess what, adults? It saves you money too, so why not do it, right? Now, I'd also like to thank all of you just for coming to the zoo today. Your support helps us conserve wildlife because we are an Arctic Ambassador Center for something called Polar Bears International, or PBI, which is a really amazing team of scientists out in the Arctic. They are studying polar bears and really learning about how they are impacted by climate change. So our hope is that all of us leave here today with a better understanding of what climate change is and the ways that we can help out as well. So thank you all for being here and being a part of that mission with us today. All right. It looks like Siku and our zookeeper have wrapped up. 
I'm going to ask you guys to stay exactly where you are, leaving plenty of space between yourself and my rope fence, just until those doors are completely shut and locked. Once we do that, you can feel free to move a little bit closer and hopefully get another good look at Siku. It looks like he'll be here playing with that barrel for quite a bit longer, which is great. Now, before you get too far, I just want to thank all of you for stopping by this morning. I hope you enjoyed seeing how we are for our players here at the zoo, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the extremes of the Arctic as well. And thank you again just for coming to the zoo today. Your support helps us conserve wildlife, so we really do appreciate you being here with us. My name is Abby. I'm part of the learning team, and I'll be here for about five more minutes. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd be more than happy to chat with yeah, you. Thank you for watching Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day here at Lincoln Park Zoo. Thank you.